Yo, what's up everybody? It's International Master Daniel Wrench back here today on our YouTube channel for chess.com. What I'd like to do today is to contribute to our Learn Chess playlist you can find here on our channel where the uh, main goal is for those very beginning chess players and so you're not even really called a chess player yet, you're somebody who aspires to be a chess player and who wants to learn the, the rules and concepts to the game as well as the most fundamental uh, strategical concepts and in this Learn Chess playlist I'm sure you've already seen videos from international master David Proust as well as chess expert David Petty and uh, hopefully you found those instructive especially for those who are really just starting out um, so if you're an advanced player and you're expecting to learn something from this video well you might be mightily disappointed other than uh, using it as the background for whatever you're doing right now and listening to the smooth sounds of my voice you're not gonna find any other enjoyment out of this video so and if you happen to find my voice obnoxious well then you wouldn't be alone and you should change the channel right now so we're gonna jump right in here today as you can see from the title we're gonna talk about a very base, the most basic thing you need to know how to do in order to play a chess game, and that is how to set up a chessboard. Right now, what you see is the beginning of a chess game, which is all of the pieces currently standing on their starting positions, and this is classical chess. You will also see that uh, as you start to play in online servers and maybe even expose yourself to. Um, different sources of chess information on the internet you're gonna see there's a game called chess 960 um, and that game is 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 in which uh, all the pawns remain in their starting positions along the second or seventh rank depending on if you're white or black as here we see black pawns are on the seventh rank but in chess 960 the eight major pieces located behind the pawns are shuffled randomly to different squares and because there are eight squares that you understand the power um, we're, we're doing chess by the powers there and so there are 960 possible positions including classical chess which is the one you see here well chess 960 has become popular on the internet it has not taken over classical chess yet and uh, for years they've been saying that someday classical chess will be dead and computers will kill it off which um, may be possible I can't predict the future right I'm not a scientist I just play one on TV so I can't predict that but what I can say is even if uh, classical chess is figured out in that sense I would doubt that it would ever stop being played at a high level and tournaments for money and into the professional um, status that it is only because I doubt that the human brain will ever have the capacity of knowing it completely unless like I said unless computers completely solve it to the point where there's no point even playing but in that case 960 will take over and so a lot of the strategical and and uh, tactical ideas you learn about the game of chess will still actually be very useful as the only thing that changes is opening theory and uh, at each starting position is different so enough about that um, if you want to know more about chess 960 you can Google it and see exactly what it is but I've pretty much explained it it was also known as Fisher random chess um, where again all the all the major pieces are shuffled along the back rank but what you see here is classical chess and the first piece we start with as I've now set up whenever we're setting up a chessboard at least when we're learning how to set up a chessboard we might as well start with our fearless leader that is the Kings so the pieces have been taken off except to show the Kings in their starting positions you will notice that both Kings start out on squares of the opposite color of their army which helps us because as we continue to uh, set up the chessboard we will now add the first ladies of the game and in doing so we see that the queens always start out on their color right we can make a sexist joke here and say that uh, girls are more picky and want to have their shoes match and so they're gonna have a, a matching shoe matching color to their starting position of their of their piece and and uh, the queen being the first lady and the only only girl on the chessboard officially anyway she likes to have her shoes match her outfit yes that's a saying I have used to teach children yes it may sound sexist I know that boys like their shoes to match too or maybe girls don't like it at all okay I'm not here to offend anybody why don't you just put down your picket fence your picket you know um, thing and just focus on the chess video shall we thank you um, so Girls like to have their shoes match, and so the queens always start on their color, and kings always start out on the opposite color of their army. So when setting up a chessboard, you see start with the king and queen in the middle, and that's the best way to remember it. Before we go any further, I want all of you to do something. Raise your right hand. Okay, seriously, if you just raised your right hand just because I asked you on an internet video, then... Uh, you know we have we have issues we need to talk about uh, but seriously hopefully uh, everyone's having fun with this and the reason why I had you raise your right hand is because you will notice that whether you're looking at the board from black or white's perspective starting on the right hand side the right corner should always be a white square whether it's h1 
or A8, for black or for white, the, the, the most important steps to knowing you're setting up a chessboard correctly are these two steps. Ra always raise your right hand, make sure you're starting out with a white square on your right, whether you're looking at the board from black or white, and always make sure the queen is on her color. If you've done that right, then it doesn't really matter. Um, you won't mess anything else up. It doesn't really matter if you understand chess notation yet, which is um, another video you can find here on our Learn Chess channel coming out here very soon. Um, and uh, if, if, you, if you understand that as long as the queen is on her color and the white square is on your right, or by definition a black square is on your left, or dark square is on your left, then you have set up a chessboard correctly to start out, and all the rest of the pieces should be pretty easy to remember. So the next pieces we'll start out with are the Towers of Power, the Rooks. The Rooks start out on the end, the corner of the board. Excuse me, a black Rook here. And uh, the next pieces we'll start out with are, are the ones I like to do first when teaching someone how to set up a chessboard because um, it's easy to remember that the bishops, the holy men of the chessboard, should be next to their leaders, which makes it easy to remember that they go next to the king and queen and not the knights. The knights, or the ponies, depending on how you want to refer to it, start out between the rooks, the towers of power, and the holy men, set up directly next to your leaders. So, easiest way to remember this, all right? White on the right, girls want their shoes to match, which means queens on their color, holy men next to the king and queen, let them bless their fearless leaders. The, the holy men need to be there, the bishops, okay? And the ponies are kind of, by process of elimination, we know that the ponies go in between the holy men and the towers of power on the end. Finally, the most obvious of which, of course, would be setting up the pawns, which, uh, though the little guys, there are, there are plenty, there are eight of them, they are still very important. And whenever setting up a chessboard, you can uh, set up the pawns first or last. In this case, we worked on setting up the pawns last. But remembering that your pawns always start out in front of your army, along the second or seventh rank, if you see the notation here, depending on whether you're black or white. Uh, but again, we'll talk about chess notation in a future video. You'll see that it's a very important thing for tournament play, and using algebraic notation to track your moves can be a very um, important step in your chess growth and, and for, for claims and such. We'll talk about that, like I said, in the chess notation video. But even if, even if the algebraic notation isn't right, from just a pure chessboard perspective, you see if we take these algebraic notations off right now, I'll do that, you see that as long as you have the queen on her color and a white square on the right, then you have a chessboard set up and you are now officially ready to play. So go get them there. Go, uh, go get out and stop, uh, stop spending all your life on the internet. Go find a real person to play chess with. Okay, how about that? All right, everybody. Love you. Talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.